In 1974, some family somewhere in the world made a decision to sponsor a 10-year-old boy in Kenya named Jackson, maybe believing that while they couldn't change the whole world, they could at least help one little boy by giving him a chance to go to school, to relieve some of the suffering caused by poverty. And Jackson was indeed poor. His father had died when he was just four years old, leaving behind 11 wives and more than 50 children. Can you imagine in a Maasai family with multiple marriages and wives? When that father died, there were 11 wives that were destitute and more than 50 children who were poor. But because of World Vision, Jackson was able to stay in school. He received new shoes, a school uniform, and books. His school fees were paid, and he got his annual health checkups as well. But in 1976, there was a terrible drought and hunger crisis in that part of Kenya. But you see, World Vision came to the rescue and supplied grain and oil and some beans to keep Jackson and his family from suffering the most severe consequences of hunger and malnutrition. Then in 1977, when the rains returned, <clears throat> World Vision taught them how to grow food and to manage gardens and to uh, prepare themselves in, in the case of a next drought. The years passed and Jackson was able to finish high school uh, with top grades and with World Vision paying his school fees the whole time. In the years ahead, Jackson managed to graduate from St. Paul's University in Nairobi. He later studied in the UK and he received a master's degree in social development and sustainable livelihoods from the University of Reading. 42 years after he was sponsored in 2016 and at the age of 52, Jackson Ole Sapit was named the sixth Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya as the spiritual leader for more than five million people. Amazing, amazing. <clears throat> Last summer I had the privilege of meeting Archbishop Ole Sapit in Kenya and he not only shared his story with me, he shared his vision. Now I decided last summer that all of you should have an opportunity to hear his vision in person. So ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in welcoming former sponsored child and the sixth Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya to our conference tonight, His Grace Jackson Ole Sapit. Thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you. Maybe you could begin by describing what the conditions were like when you were a boy. You were 10 years old when you were sponsored, but you, you lived in really serious poverty. And, and can you kind of, uh, what do you remember about those early years living in Kenya? Yes, um, Richard, my father died when I was four years old, so I vaguely remember everything what happened that time. And uh, my stepbrothers uh, did send m myself and my mother and my siblings uh, away from our home because there was competition of the resources, uh, land and cattle and animals, livestock. And therefore, those mothers who did not have older sons to protect them, my elder brothers, uh, stepbrothers, did send us away. And uh, they sent us to uh, my uh, Angus home, uh, my mother's brothers, uh, because uh, his, uh, her, her parents died also by that time. And uh, uh, we, I went to stay with my uncles who did not have cows the way we did in my father's home. And therefore, it was very, very difficult. They went to be employed by other people to look after the animals and that's why they could send home for us to be able to, to, to feed on. And I do remember my mother used many occasions early in the morning, go from house to house asking whether there is a cup of forage for us to have uh, every morning. Yeah. That was how life was like. So not only were you poor, but after your father's death, uh, your older stepbrothers literally took away your land and mm -hmm. your cattle and, and kind of expelled you and your mother making you even poorer than you were before. That's um, right. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, let me read something that you said to me last summer. You said, I thank God he has put me in a position to give back what I received. I was sponsored. When you empower children, you have a society for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I am forever grateful to World Vision. I would not have become the person I am. I'm an example of someone who can rise up. I have become a beacon of hope to my people. You know, in 1974, World Vision was a very different organization than it is today, but 
Do you remember some of the things that World Vision did that were so influential in your, in your, in your young life? Yeah, it is indeed true, uh, that statement. Um, and it is very true that uh, we as human beings see things afterwards, but God sees them before. And uh, I think God saw something before. Uh, and uh, World Vision, when they came to our village and looking for children who are vulnerable, uh, I was found to be one of them through our school, the school that I went. And uh, uh, the key things that uh, World Vision did that empowered me to become the person I am today, one was giving me education, so they paid my school fees, bought school uniform uh, for myself, and uh, uh, made sure that I'm always in school. They also made sure that uh, my health is looked after, and we used to be taken to health checks uh, after every two or three months, uh, dewormed, so, so that they made sure that uh, we are healthy. Uh, during the drought of 1976, uh, World Vision was there to feed us, uh, not only myself, but the entire family, including the extended family of my uncles, <coughs> because the food that we received was enough to cook uh, enough porridge uh, for everybody else in the family. Uh, and above all, uh, they introduced me to Christianity, although I did not become a Christian then, through the Christian summer camps. The, we don't have summer in, in Kenya, but uh, August was... <laughs> August was our month of uh, Christian camps, and uh, we were taken to several of them. So I, I, I first heard of the gospel uh, through those camps, although I did not uh, uh, believe then. It was afterwards that I came to give my life to Jesus. So those things impacted my life in a big way yeah. afterwards when I came to realize that God was in the picture even before I knew God was there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's wonderful. You know, one of the things I was struck with when we spoke uh, last summer was your vision for the church, the church that you lead, uh, specifically the Anglican Church in Kenya. Um, but you have a master's degree in development and sustainable livelihoods, and you communicated to me a vision of the church operating not just for the spiritual nurture and care of people, but for the church to go outside the four walls and get involved in the lives of the, the community mm. uh, and to be transformative in the community. Share a little bit about that philosophy that you have and, and where it came from. Yes, uh, uh, actually, as I said earlier, true, God works miraculously through different uh, situations. When I was first employed as an evangelist, I was also asked to uh, do extra work uh, uh, by uh, introducing a little bit of agriculture to the families that I was uh, evangelizing. But I, I did more than that uh, as well. I began teaching little children how to read and write and started an evening class for the bigger boys who were herding cattle who had no opportunity to read and write. And I began to see the totality of the human person that you need to be reached. Uh, now, after many years of my theological training, and I, I did a master's degree in social development, and now being a leader of the church, I began to visualize and to see vision in a different way, mission in a, di a different way. And uh, mission to me is both pastoral care and social transformation. It is in the heart of Jesus' ministry. He healed the sick, forgave sin at the same time. He fed the hungry. He talked about ecology. He talked about business. And therefore, I want to see the mission of the church in that totality and wholesomeness. And uh, the vision of now uh, giving the Anglican Church of Kenya is a wholesome ministry for a wholesome nation. And uh, I want to see that happen. And the hope of the world and the hope of, 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 of the church in Kenya is in the ministry of the local church. And I want to see the local church becoming the convener and sustainer of discussions about human development. So that it is in the church where we gather to read the word of God, where we gather to, do, to, 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 to think about education of our children, where we gather to talk about our health, where we gather to talk about the river next door, where we gather to talk about our forest, where we gather to talk about uh, economic empowerment of women, where we gather to say what will the youth in this community do. So we want to see the local church becoming that convener and sustain these discussions. And not only discussions for people to hear and to talk about, but leading the church to take action 
and the church leading the community to take action. That's the, the kind of church I'm envisioning. That is a vision I have, and I see the local church is a place where transformation can happen, and transformation that will lead us to good life here, but to heaven as God has promised. Yeah. Wow.